suffer for him because that is the theme for the month of March. But when our son gave me the music piece to be photocopied, I saw the title and I was going through the, the, the song, I decided to change the title of the message so the title is different from what you have in your program. So we all stand and let's turn our Bibles please in the book of Job chapter 19. Job chapter 19 and we will read verses 25 and 26. I will be asking Brother Mike to help me with the uh, verses today. Job chapter 19 verses 25 and uh, 26. Job chapter 25, chapter 19, 25 and 26. You can get the title in your notes. So we have two titles for the message today. You can use either one. Shall we read these verses together? Ready? Start. For I know that my Redeemer is and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Although after my skin worms destroy his body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Amen. Let's go back to verse 25. Job said this. This is one of those things that he uttered. Ito yung isa sa mga nabanggit ni Job nung siya ay uh, talagang duman sa magiging pagsubok. He said, For I know that my Redeemer be there, and that He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Love Heavenly Father, we praise You and we thank You for giving us another opportunity to come together to hear your words. Lord, how blessed we are to have this opportunity. Lord, as we look at your word for the next few minutes, I pray that you will open our understanding, our hearts, and give us receptive hearts, responsive hearts, so that we may be, we may be able to grasp the things that you want us to learn today. Bless your people, bless your word, Bless your servant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much. You may be seated. In the record of the scriptures, there is no one who was more tested and tried than Job. Pag binasa natin ang salita ng Panginoon, there are people who experience some trials and testings, but no one was more tested and tried than Job. Yet, in his trial, Job trusted the faithfulness, the trustworthiness, and the truthfulness of God. Matinding pagsubo ang dinaanan niya, pero uh, nanatili siyang uh, sumamparataya at nanalig sa kanyang Panginoon. Amen? In the end, the Lord vindicated him and blessed him tremendously. Makita natin yung pagpapala ng Panginoon sa kanyang buhay in the end. Now, let us look at three things this morning about this great man. Number one is his testimony. Let us look at his testimony. We will go back to Job chapter 1 and verse number 1. The Bible says here, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and is stood evil. Now, Job had a great testimony. Job had a great testimony. Maganda ang kanyang testimony. And the, let me say this. The greatness of one's testimony is based upon who is testifying. Amen? Amen. Do you believe that? The greatness of, of a person's testimony depends on who is testifying. You know, sometimes people will say a lot of good things about you. Or maybe they will say bad things about you. But the question is, do they really know you? Do they really know you? People may go back 
and uh, people may say, ah, he is a good person, he is this, he is that. Kasi uh, they will only testify by what they see in you. But they really do not know what is inside of you. So kung yung nagte-testify sa'yo is nakilala ka lang naman ng ilang araw lang, siguro it's only, it's not, it's not really you. Uh, maybe they have an idea of who you are. But what I'm saying is this, the greatness of a person's testimony depends on who is giving the testimony. And this is the reason why I believe that testimony, that Job had a great testimony because the one who was giving the testimony is, was God himself. That means kung meron nang isang nakakakilala kay Job, it is none other than God. And listen to the testimony of God regarding Job. And in your notes, he was perfect and upright. Look at verse number 8 and verse number 23. These next three points here will be based on these three verses. Let me read verse number 8. Job chapter 1 verse number 8. The Bible says this. Can we go there for the mic? Job chapter 1 verse number 8. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Satan, This is God is speaking to Satan. He said, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Look at what God said. Hast thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth? What is his testimony? God said he a perfect and upright. One that fear, feared God and is steward evil. He mentioned the same words in verse number 1. Now let's go to chapter 2 and verse number 3 and see what, what God has to say about Job. Job chapter 2 and verse number 3. And the Lord said unto Satan, this is the second time he was talking to Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job after he was tried, after he lost his wealth, after he lost his family? Okay? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and is true and evil. And still he holdeth fast in his integrity, although thou, was, thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. See? God was giving this testimony about Job. What was his testimony? He was up, he was perfect and upright. Ano yung ibig sabihin nito? Job lived a life that was based on upright decisions. Tama yung kanyang mga decisions na ginagawa. It may not be right in the sight of the world, but the decisions he made were right in the sight of God. And one of those decisions that uh, not obviously was his decision to believe God. That's why in our text verse, Job said, I know that my what? Redeemer liveth. Is God your Redeemer? Amen. Is Jesus Christ your Savior this morning? Amen. Folks, that's an important decision that you make in your life. The Bible says, He feared God. He feared God. In verse number 8, in, in chapter 12, verse number 3. Throughout the scripture, the concept of fearing God deals with respecting God and His position. Pag sinabi sa Bible na, fear God, what does that mean? Reverence God. Respect God. Folks, God wants us to respect Him for who He is and what He can do. Amen? Amen. God wants us to live like Job. He, he was perfect, the Bible says, and upright. He feared God and let us see, the Bible says that he is true evil. The word is true means he hated evil. Write the word down in your Bible. He hated evil. You know what the world wants? Listen to this. The world wants us to toy and laugh at evil. Ganyan ang gusto ng salibutan na gawin natin. The world wants us to toy na paglaruan natin yung kasalanan or yung mali or love at evil. Siguro kung meron ngayon mga nakikita ng larong-laro na ngayon, yung mga 
most of the hosts of TV are, you know, many of them are homosexuals. And some Christians would even enjoy uh, those shows. And even, you know, they, uh, they would even uh, laugh at those things. But folks, hindi yan ang gusto ng Panginoon sa isang mananampalataya. God tells us that although we are in the world, okay, we are not to be of this world. God wants us to hate evil. Look at your Bible in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15, 16, and 17. This is a very common verse and many of you know this verse. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15, 16, and 17. A good reminder for all of us. The Bible says here, so let's read the verses together. Ready? Begin. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. God doesn't want us to toy or love at evil. God wants us to hate evil. That is the testimony of Job. God gave the testimony of Job. God said he was perfect. He was upright. That means the decisions he made were right. He feared God and he hated evil. The second thing that we see about Job is his trials. The trials of Job or his trials. Let's go back now to Job chapter 1. Tignan natin dito yung mga pagsubok ni Job. Chapter 1 verses 13. Pagsimula tayo dito sa may verse number 13. Look at verse number 13. Let me begin in verse number 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, that Job feared God for naught. Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance and increase uh, in the land. Verse number 11. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had, that he had and he will curse thee into thy face and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Let's look at verse number, let us look at verse number 13 now. Tignan niyo ito. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. 14. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding besides them. And his obedience fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burnt up the ship and his servants and consumed them and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, you see this? One problem after the other. One trial after the other. While he was yet, was yet speaking, hindi pa tapos magsalita yung isa. Meron na naman. There came also another and said, the, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and I've carried them away, yea, and slain the serpents with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell them. Makikita natin dito yung pagsubok, yung trial ni Job. If you will read in verses 2 and 3, Job was a very wealthy person. In verse number 2, the Bible tells us here that uh, he had uh, seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep. Ganong karami yung kanyang karnero. 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. But you know what? 
All this was taken from him. Folks, trials reveals the depth of a person's character and love for God. Dito mo malalaman ang pagmamahal ng isang kristyano sa Panginoon. Amen? Your love for God will be determined by the trials you will face in life. Ito yung matinding pagsubok na duma dumating sa buhay ni Job. Job faced financial trials. Job faced financial trials. Do you face financial trials in life? Meron tayong mga uh, pagsubok when it comes to finances. Maybe you need something. Maybe you lose, you, you lose something. But Job lost a lot. He was probably the he was possibly the richest man of his day. If you will read the, the verses, yet in one day it was all done. Can you imagine? One day you have everything you need, and the following day you have none. How would you feel if you are kung ikaw si Job? Okay. It's like. You have a bank deposit in uh, in commercial bank. You also have a deposit in Doha Bank, and you also have a deposit in what else? Ali Bank. And in one day, all of those banks declared bankruptcy. And all of your resources, lahat ng kaimanan mo, are deposited in those banks. And immediately, all of those banks declared bankruptcy and there is no way you can get your money. That is exactly what happened to Job. He lost everything. <clears throat> his ships, his camels, everything that he had. Nawala sa kanya lahat. Yet, Job did not stop loving and serving God. He did not stop loving and serving God. Not only did he face financial trials, he also faced family trials. Let's go to verse number 18 now. Verse number 18, Job chapter 1, verse number 18 and 19. Tignan nyo anong nangyari dito. We read earlier that the ilang, ilang anak meron siya? How many sons did he have? Seven. Seven? And how many daughters? Three. <coughs> What happened to them while he was yet speaking? He's speaking of those things who gave a report that his ships were all taken away, his servants were killed, his camels were taken away, his servants were killed. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Verse 19. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell them. Ano nangyari dito? He lost his sons. Let's go to chapter 19. Starting with verse number 14. Job chapter 19, verse number 14. Look at this. He lost his sons. And you remember his wife? He also lost his friends. Tinalikuran siya ng kanyang mga kaibigan. You know what? Kung meron kang problema, dyan mo makikilala yung totoong mong mga kaibigan. You will know who your real friends are when you are facing trials in life. <coughs> Kung meron kang mga pagsubok. But all of Job's friends, either they left him or they were accusing him. In fact, even his wife, he said, Job, do you still retain your integrity? And he said, why don't you just curse God and die? Can you imagine that? Your wife telling you those things? Look at what Job said in uh, chapter 19, verse number 14. He said, my kinsfolk my kinsfolk have failed and my familiar friends have forgotten me. Yung kanyang, kung sa ilong ko pa, ang iasuod ka mga abyan. Verse number 15. They that dwell in my house and my maids count me for a stranger. Can you imagine that? Your maids, your servants, they count you as a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I called my servant and he gave me no answer. 
I entreated him with my mouth. My breath is strange to my wife. Though I entreated for the children's sake of my of my own body, yea, young children despise me. I arose and they spake against me. All my inward friends abhorred me, and they whom I love are turned against me. And verse number twenty says, "My whole, my bone cleave to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped uh, with the skin of, of my teeth." What is he saying? His friends left him. His children died. They all died. Everyone deserted him. But again, Joel remained faithful. He remained faithful. His faithfulness to God, listen to this, was not dependent on the well-being of his family. Let me say that again. His faithfulness was not dependent on the well-being of his family. Hindi siya tapat sa Panginoon dahil lahat ay okay, lahat ay mabuti sa kanyang family. His faithfulness to God was not dependent on the loyalty of his friends. Let me ask you this. Are you serving God? Are you faithful to God just because all things are well with you and your family? Are you serving God simply because uh, you have lots of friends? What about if your friends will turn against you? And what about if uh, if something happens to your family? Folks, Job faced family trials, yet he remained faithful to the Lord. Not only that, he faced physical trials. He faced physical trials. Let's go to chapter 2, verses 7 down to verse number 10. Let's move to Job chapter 2, 7, down to verse number 10. So he faced financial trials, family trials, and physical trials. What did he say? So when Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils. Let me pause and ask you this. Have you had boils before? Boils? Say the one again. The is that it? Okay. Sa Tagalog, ano? Pigsa. Pero ang pigsa sa Ilocano is stain. Lord, bigyan mo po. Ano ang prayer na? Pigsa. Okay. Pigsa is strength sa Ilocano. Pigsa in Tagalog is... It's different the way you pronounce it, but it's boys. Okay. Kung sa Ilongo pa, kubak. Ay, uya pos. Ano mo ba? Ano mo mong Japon? Ang mga ganyan ko lang maging tawag sa mga Job o sa Ilonggo, si Hope kay Hubag. Okay? So when Satan fought from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils, matinding mga mga pigsa, from the sole of his foot unto his crown, can you imagine somebody having boils Mula dito sa baa hanggang sa tuktok. Isa nga lang nandiyan pag naglalaki ka rin yan. Parang tigas hindi mo alam may, may boy pala sa kinigili. Can you imagine how much he suffered? Look at verse number 8. And he took him up butcher uh, and to scrape himself with her. And he sat down among the asses. Then said his wife unto him. Ito na yan. Does thou he still retain that integrity? What will you say, Brother Mike, if your wife said this to you? He said, curse God and die. Curse God and die. Verse number 10. But he said unto her, look at his answer. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? Paano sabihin sa Tagalog yan? Marunong ba? Marunong lang ba tayo tumanggap ng mabuti mula sa Panginoon? In all this, I want you to say this, in all this, the Bible says, did not Job sin with his lips? 
Job faced physical trials. Satan tried to destroy, to destroy Job by taking his health. The pain of the boils and the rejection of his wife must have hurt him so much. Yet there is something we can learn from Job. The Bible says, in all this, Job sinned not. Can you please go to uh, 1 verse number 22? Let's go back to chapter 1 verse number 22. He said the same thing. In, in chapter 1 verse number 22 and chapter 2 verse 10, he said the same thing. In chapter 1 and verse number 22, this is what he said. In all this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. Look at your Bible in chapter 13, verse number 5. Chapter 13, verse number uh, chapter 15. 13, verse 15. Chapter 13, verse number 15. Job chapter 13, verse number 15. Tignan nyo ano ni Job dito. This is what he said. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. <coughs> you see that? Do you see how much he trusted God? He said, though he is lame, kahit papapatayin ako ng Panginoon, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. He remained faithful. First is his testimony. Second, his trials. And then third is his triumph. His triumph, his victory. We go now to the last chapter of the book of Job, chapter 42, verses 1 to 6. Job chapter 42, verses 1 to 6. I want you to see this. The Bible says, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything. Amen? Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. I know that thou canst do everything. And that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knoweth not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of, of the ear, but now my own eyes see of thee. Verse number 6, Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. You know, somebody said this. Things that are truly valuable often require much time and work for the production. Yung mga bagay na talagang mahahalaga, it requires time, it requires work to produce those things. I asked J.D., I think yesterday I said, what's the best piano that you know? Kasi meron din akong nabasang uh, isang ano rito na. And he said, how do you, how do you pronounce this? Steinway. And that's exactly what, uh, what I have uh, read of. Let me, let me read something here. The Steinway piano has been preferred by keyboard masters. Itong gustong gustong gamitin ng mga, mga pianists. It produces phenomenal sound. Steinway pianos are built today the same way they were over 150 years ago when Henry, Henry Steinway started his business. 200 craftsmen and 12,000 parts are required to produce one of these magnificent instruments. Most crucial is the rim bending. I pinanood namin kagabi ni Brother Bernard because I was just curious. So, tinignan niya sa YouTube how they make, uh, is that, uh, Steinway uh, and Sons, and how they make this piano. It's fascinating. Most crucial is the trim bending process, where 18 layers of marble are bent together on iron press to create the shape of a Steinway ground. Five coats of lacquer are applied, and hand wrapped to give the piano its outer glow. The instrument then goes to the uh, pounder room where its key is uh, tested 10,000 times to ensure the quality and durability. It takes time, it takes work to produce it. 
Because it is something that is very, very valuable. Ganyan din ang isang Kristiyano. Ang isang Kristiyano, for a Christian to be uh, to be useful in the sight of God, we, we need to undergo trials, we need to undergo uh, testings in life. Amen? Amen. But in the end, letter A, Job was enlightened. That's what we learned in Job chapter 42 verses 1 to 6. He learned a great lesson from the trials that he endured. Look at your Bible in chapter 23 of the book of Job. Ito yung pinaka-text natin dyan sa handout nyo. Uh, Job chapter 23, starting with verse number, uh, verse number 8. Look at this. Job chapter 23, verse number 8. This is what he said. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. He is talking about God. Hinahanap niya ang Panginoon. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, and I cannot see him. Can you imagine those times na talagang kailangan ni Job ang Panginoon? The times when he needed God the most? It seems like God was hiding from him. The times when he needed God the most. But look at verse number 10. He is saying, I can see God. But he is saying, He can see me. Sabi niya, but he knoweth the way that I take. My friend, kung ano man ang pinagdadaanan mo sa buhay, alam na alam ng Panginoon niya. Whatever you are going through in life, God is fully aware of what you are going through. He said, when He had tried me, what did He say? I shall come forth as Lord. Amen. You know what is sad? One of the saddest things that can happen is for us to endure trials without gaining knowledge from them. The tragedy is not actually the trial that we are facing. The tragedy here is missing the lesson or missing the message that God wants us to learn by going through those trials. So when you are going through those trials, don't say, Lord, please remove these uh, sufferings from me. That should never be our prayer. Our prayer should be, Lord, help me to understand the message. Lord, help me to learn what you want me to learn through this trial. Job was enlightened. Job was enriched. Let's go to chapter 42, verses 12 and 13. Tignan nyo ito. I want you to compare some verses here, Brother Mike. Chapter uh, 42, verses 12 and 13. Look at this now. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Do you want blessings? Do you want blessings? Amen. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels. And then you isulat niyo sa notes niyo. How many, how many ships did he have? 14,000. How many camels did he have? And a yoke of a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. Is it possible that you go back to chapter 1 and let's look at verse number, uh, verse number 3. Compare those. Tingnan niyo ha. Job chapter 1 verse number 3. His substance also was in chapter 42 how many sheep did he have? 14. But in the beginning he only had 7. And how many camels? 3,000. But later on he had how many? 6. And 500 yoke of books and later on he had what? 1,000. And 500 she asses and later it was 1,000. What does that mean? Everything was double. See? And look at verse number 13. Let's go back to chapter 46, verse number 13. He had also seven sons and three daughters. How many sons did he have before? Seven. How many daughters? How many did he have now? Did God double his children? Yes. 
Because when your animals die, they die. But when your children die, they go to the Lord. They are still alive. The only thing that God did not do for is his wife. Pati noble ng Panginoon ng asawa niya, talagang magsususayot na si Job. That's why God did not kill his wife. Because God is obligated to give him two of the same kind of wife. And that would cause him to commit suicide in the end. Now look at verse number 14. Tignan nyo. And he called the name of the first, ito yung mga pangalan, Jemima. And the name of the second, Kezia. And the name of the third, Karen Hapo. Look at verse number 15. I want you to see this. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. Talagang ibinigyan siya ng napakagandang mga anak na babae. Ewan ko dun sa mga lalaki. Ang nabanggit lang dito, the daughters, but I don't know with the sons. And their father gave them inheritance among the brethren. But we see here that Job was in risk. When the story of Job was completed, we discover that he was greatly blessed. God gave him ten more children and God doubled his possessions. Not only that he was enlightened, not only that he was enriched, Job is an encouragement. Job is an encouragement. Let me go to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. In verse number 11, Behold, we count them happy, which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of... Ye have heard of the patience of... Job. When churches and Christians are suffering, preachers points to the story of Job. His life serves as an encouragement or a reminder to stay faithful in times of trials. I read another sad story here. Let me just read this to you. It is a story about a pastor and his wife. Let me just read this story, okay? And just listen as I, as I go through the story. Pastor Dwayne Scott Willis and his wife Jeanette, ito yung pangalan nila, did they love the nine children that God has given them? They had nine kids. We have four. They had nine. Marami silang anak. I know a preacher in Germany, Brother Mark Bachman, he has 16. By the time he came to our church and preached, and he was not done yet. <laughs> this couple had nine. The story says, but mid morning on November 8th of 1994, this is 13 years ago, a fiery auto explosion claimed the lives of six of the youngest. That means six of the children were killed in uh, a car accident. Within hours, the freak accident made national and international headlines from behind, from behind guarded hospital doors came good news concerning Scott and Janet, the parents. The physical recovery from the first and second degree burns would be complete. However, the most astonishing recovery became apparent as Scott and Jeanette displayed their emotional and spiritual stability. Milwaukee, the nation, and even the world looked on it on in amazement as eight days later the direct couple explained to the media how they could make it through such a uh, such a sudden and horrible tragedy. The following statements, they, they told you the story. The first paragraph here is, they said, Our God, our pain. They quoted from Psalms chapter 34 that says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. All things and see that the Lord is good. And then the pastor said, Janet and I want to praise and thank God that there is no there is no question in our minds that God is good and we praise Him in all things. God is a great God. Can you imagine 
couple going through an accident, they were burned and six of their kids died. And yet they were thankful to the Lord. They were still uh, faithful to God. And then he tells us about the accident. As far as the accident is concerned, I was looking on the road and, and was alert. Our little baby was behind us. Ben was behind us on the other side. In the back were the other four children. They were all buckled in. I saw the object, a metal brace. May nakita siyang uh, metal brace on the road. I thought it was one of those blocks that maybe came in the midst of the burning. Uh, was in the midst of the burning. His clothes were mostly burned, burned off by the time uh, he got out. The five youngest children who had been asleep died instantly. No sound was heard by Janet or me as we struggled to get out of the van. A, an unknown man took his shirt off. An unknown man took his shirt off his back to soak Betty's wounds. And another beat the burning clothes on Janet's back. Benny died in the intensive care unit. We believe children are a heritage of the Lord. We thank God for the six precious children, four boys and a sweet girl, so much like the, her mom, and a little baby just beginning to smile and grow and grow. We understood that they were given of the Lord, and we understood they were not ours. They were His, and we were His stewards of those children. And so God took them back. He is the giver and take care of life. We must tell you that we hurt and sorrow as your parents would for your children. The depth of pain is indescribable. The Bible expresses our feelings that we sorrow but not as those without hope. What gives us our firm foundation for our hope is in the Bible. The truth, the word of God assures that Ben, Job, Sam, Ham, Elizabeth and Peter are in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. We know based upon the word of God where they are. Our strength rests in the word of God. The Bible is sure and gives us confidence. Uh, everything God promises is true. Satan was permitted by God to put Job's trials in three different areas. Financial trials, family trials, physical trials. Yet he triumphed by trusting God. You know, when we are facing trials in life, it's good for us to remember the song that he called the song. When trials, when we are faced with trials, let us always remember that our Redeemer is faithful and true. In the time of Abayana Pano, Job remained faithful and God expects us to be faithful in times of trials as well. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this simple message Lord, that you have given us today.